In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, everybody. Lovely to see you all. For those of you who are back for the first time, welcome again. And hello to, is anyone in the hall? No one in the hall, but there are people watching at home. So hello to everyone uh, who's watching at home. Thanks for being here. To prepare ourselves to celebrate our Sunday Mass together, let us call to mind our sins and seek the tender mercy of our loving God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together we give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Be seated for our readings, please. Proclaim to the name. 
nations, God is king. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Response. Second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus and Timothy to the church in Thessalonica, which is in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, wishing you grace and peace. We always mention you in our prayers and thank God for you all and constantly remember before God our Father how you have shown your faith in action, worked for love and persevered through hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, brothers, that God loves you and that you have been chosen, because when we brought the good news to you, it came to you not only as words, but as power and as the Holy Spirit and as utter conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went away to work out between them how to trap Jesus in what he said. And they sent their disciples to him, together with the Herodians, to say, Master, we know that you are an honest man and teach the way of God in a most honest way. And that you are not afraid of anyone because a man's rank means nothing to you. Tell us your opinion then. Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus was aware of their malice and replied, You hypocrites, why do you set this trap for me? Let me see the money you pay tax with. They handed him a denarius and he said, Whose head is this? Whose name? Caesar's, they replied. He then said to them, Very well, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. You probably heard the one about the mother who was in a panic because her little boy swallowed a coin. Quick, she called her husband, call the doctor. But the husband calmly replied, we don't need a doctor, call the priest instead. Why, said the mother, do you think our boy's going to die? No, he said, but our parish priest has a way of getting money out of anybody. <laughs> That's not a play on words for collection because we don't want the coins here. We want a paper collection here on the way out, notes only. The reason I mention a coin is because the coin is at the centre of today's gospel. During the past few weeks, we've seen Jesus really challenge the authority of the scribes and the Pharisees over the past three Sundays. I've asked those of you that have been here or tuned in online or went elsewhere, perhaps you'll remember the gospel. Three weeks ago was the parable of the two sons. The one son told his father that he would go into the vineyard to work, but he didn't. Jesus points to the religious leaders as the unworthy son who doesn't do the will of the father. Then two weeks ago was the parable of the wicked tenants. Jesus tells the chief priests and the Pharisees that they are the wicked tenants. Finally, last week, if you remember, parable of the king's feast and Jesus compares the condemned guests once again with the scribes, the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the day. The Pharisees now have had enough. They are angry and furious with Jesus so they plan today's gospel as a trap. They direct a carefully formulated question at Jesus. 
They begin by flattering him. They call him master. We know that you are a good and honest man, they tell him. Then they ask the question while the crowd looks on. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? The crowd must have fallen silent at this because it was a loaded question and a no-win situation for Jesus. If he said that they should pay taxes to Caesar, then he would lose all credibility to the Jewish crowd that are listening to him. Remember, they're a conquered people, a proud people that are forced to pay taxes to Rome. They're unhappy with these pagan soldiers that have came into their holy city, trampled on it, and now rule them. But if he said it was wrong to pay taxes to Caesar, then he was actually breaking the law because he would be committing a public act of treason to the Romans who could arrest him. The silence was deafening while the crowd waited for Jesus to reply. What was he going to say? How's he going to get out of this one? He's in big trouble now. Show me the coin, our Lord answered. He is telling the crowd that he doesn't have the emperor's coins on him. They do. Show me one of your coins, he says to them. The possession of the coin is the implicit acknowledgement of Roman sovereignty, of a pagan ruler, those that do not believe in the one true God. Whose image is this, Jesus asks, Caesar's. Then give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. The answer infuriated them. He had outfoxed them again. Jesus had made them look like fools again. For all their power and prestige, all the money that they had in their pockets, had been upstaged by a simple, humble teacher. He did not tell them what belonged to Caesar and what belonged to God. He knew that would change in every age. Jesus never laid down rules and regulations. And he certainly didn't beat people up with a stick for not following the letter of the law. He laid down principles. And that is why his teaching is timeless. That's why we're sat here over 2,000 years later. He gives us the principle, then tells us to think and figure it out for ourselves. He makes his appeal not to some lofty principle, but to our common sense. The implication is that the coin has Caesar's picture on it, so give it to him. But the most important line is, give to God what is God. God does not want taxes. He does not need your vote. He doesn't need you to take up arms in his defense. But God does deserve our hearts and our conscience. These should never be given to any human institution. These should never be given to money or a particular job or anything else. Our greatest love, our greatest loyalty belongs to God, from whom all love flows. The Roman coin was stamped with the image of Caesar. Our hearts are stamped with the image of God. You and I are made in his image and likeness. That is a beautiful fact sometimes forget. All of us are made in the image and likeness of our loving God. All of us are his children. All of us have so many gifts and talents. All of us have so much to offer the world. Too often these days we beat ourselves up. We look down on ourselves. We feel so much pressure from outside. There's nothing wrong with you. You're made in the image and likeness of God. Your heart is stumped by God.
do anything. You can show mercy in abundance. You can show love beyond love. We're called to be a united community, to look after one another, to be there for one another, and we can do that because we're made in the image and likeness of God who is love. Our hearts stand with the image of God. So perhaps the question is, shall we, can we, and do we give to God what is God's? We all, at some time in our life, have to make decisions. Do we serve God or Caesar? Good or evil? Worldly desires, a holy ambition to be with the Lord and dwell in his house forever. Matters of state or matters of divinity. Being human, we sometimes make bad choices. I know I do. And we ask the question, what should I do? What must I do to be authentic and to live the life that God has called me to live? A life that is based not on the self, but a life that is lived for others. For the well-being of the common good, for our families certainly, but for our community, but especially living for those who are most vulnerable and in need. We're called to rally round one another, to base our lives on Jesus, to be grounded in his mercy and his love, and to share that mercy and love with others. There's an old Native American Indian wisdom. An old Native American Indian was sharing that wisdom with his grandson and he told the grandson that all humans have two wolves that struggle inside of us. One is the wolf of peace, love and kindness and the other is the wolf of fear, greed and hatred. This fight goes on in every human being. And the grandson asked, which wolf will win, grandfather? And the wise old man said, whichever one you feed and whichever one you encourage. This week, we ask ourselves, who comes first in my life? Is Christ top of our lists? Suppose by being here this morning, you are witnessing that Christ is important to you. He's sending a message out to the world. Those of you fantastic that have brought your children, wonderful. It takes great effort to get up and get the kids ready to come in. Those of you who live alone but your neighbour knows you go to church, they see you passing the house the same time every Sunday, you're sending a witness to them. Your families and friends that you'll speak to later on, hello, how are you doing? What have you been doing? I've been to Mass. It's a new priest he's fantastic, very handsome, he's lovely when you talk to him later on. You're sending a message. Christ is important to you and your life, and that's a tremendous witness in your role evangelizing just by being here. Such and such goes to church, you know. Sends them a message. Do anything at the weekend when you're at work? Well, I went to Mass. Wow. Makes people think. You're all evangelizing. You're all witnesses by being here this morning. That's great because Christ is the center of your week. But we must live that witness every day. We must be people grounded in prayer, that pray for one another, that pray for our families, that pray for the faces that you see around you this morning. As a community, as a parish family. Grounded in prayer, sharing his love, sharing his mercy. This is what being Christian is all about. In a few moments, we receive Jesus Christ our Lord and the Holy Eucharist in a very intimate and powerful way. We don't receive him for ourselves. We receive him for others. And we live him. We live out his love, his mercy and his peace in the world. Let us stand and profess what we believe, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Bidding prayers are omitted during COVID guidelines, but perhaps we can just take a brief moment to bring before the Lord in the silence of our own hearts all our prayers as we remember our families and our friends, for those who have died and gone before us. And we pray for healing, for strength, and a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our parish. We ask Mary, our Blessed Mother, to pray with us and for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, that the hour of our death. Amen. Lord our God, we ask you to hear and receive all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have restored to the gifts of yours, so that by sinning we had lost in disobedience, but now we are restored in one family, one church. And so, Lord, with all the angels and the saints, we too give you praise as we acclaim together. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died, especially those for whom we now remember. Welcome these and all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, as with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away all the sins of the world. Blessed are those that are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
have a moment of silence to give thanks to Jesus for the gift of himself in this sacrament. Grant, O Lord, we pray that, benefiting from participation in heavenly gifts, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. Second week we've been opened. Good to see uh, such a good crowd. I hope that you feel safe. Uh, I cannot reiterate enough how much the church is cleaned and scrubbed and we're all in face masks, so hopefully... Uh, we're as safe as possibly can be. Thanks to our readers. Where are they? Great readers there. Thank you very much. And we do need more readers. If you'd like to sign up uh, to read, we need two readers every Sunday, so please do see me. If you do jobs here that I haven't met, then let me know who you are and what you do, please. Could do with people setting up on a Sunday or anyone wants to alter, be an altar server, then let me know if you've made your first Holy Communion or above. You want to buy some brasso and clean the brasso as well, that would be good. Lots of jobs for lots of people. Uh, so if you do any jobs uh, that we haven't met, then please let me know. Uh, strange times, but we're up and running anyway. And when we get back to normal, hopefully we'll be packed out, I'm sure. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let's go in the peace and joy of Christ. You've noticed there's no collection because of COVID restrictions, but you're not allowed to leave without putting money in the bucket on your way out. No coins, just paper money, please. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely day. Lovely to see you. Good morning, everybody.